What's going on, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of Clairvoyance. This is our seventh episode, and, you know, we are excited to be talking to the guys over at ESV Wildfire. Now, we were supposed to have you and Iacona, if I'm pronouncing his name correctly, but his internet is kind of failing us right now. Um, but Poom, what's going on, man? Hey, what's up? How you been? So anyone that's seen the show, they probably know who myself and Matt are. Um, but Poom, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, well, I'm Poom, I'm main warrior player for ESV Wildfire. Um, I mean, don't have much to share. I've been gaming for a while. I'm 26 years old, and uh, that's about it, I guess, as for my background. Um, well, I mean, is this your first competitive title? Is there, or Have you played other MOBAs? Like, tell us a little bit about your history in gaming. Um, I've played other MOBAs. i played League for a little bit. I, I played in the beta of that, and I played against some of... Uh, the people who are retired now, I played against like Reginald and Hotshot GG and all them in beta, which isn't saying much. I mean, everybody played against them in beta, but I mean, played against them, played a little bit of ladder, stopped playing that, and just started playing other things, mainly just like Diablo and stuff like that. So nothing major. I played <laughs> Counter Strike for a bit, and yeah, it's pretty much my history. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So what uh, what made you choose Heroes? This is like your main game now. Like why why um, do you put so much time into this compared to what you did before? Well, I got an invite, and I was like, ah, I'll check it out. And I started playing it, and it pretty much went from there. I I liked the way the game worked. It cut out all the, just like everything that I hated about the other MOBAs, for the most part. Not everything, but like a lot of it. And it was just easy to get the hang of. And I realized after, you know, a month or so of playing it that I'm still having fun playing it. So, I mean that counts for something and it didn't get boring at all i kept playing it and met new people and just kept playing it was really fun yeah i mean that's a huge part of the game well i mean yeah. your your passion and you know the amount of fun that you guys are having at the time is uh, obviously showing because currently we have two leagues going on in heroes of the storm there's the esv championship series and the new heroes premier league that just started yesterday and uh, when we look at the groups here in the ESV Championship Series, you guys are actually first place in your group. Uh, ESV Wildfire is currently eight and two in your in your group, or I was going to say division, but I guess it's the same thing. Um, you know what? It, what are you guys doing to kind of like get that edge on your competition? Because I mean, there's a lot of like known people. Like your group has Team Snowflake, which is there are three former StarCraft II pro players on that team. And you're ahead of them. They're in second place. And you guys are ahead of Glorious, which is ZP's team. And ZP's is a very popular streamer here on Twitch. So, I mean, I think a lot of people would put them as the favorites. But here you are sitting on top ahead of both of those teams. And kind of what's really your secret to, to doing that? Um, uh, <laughs> it's not a real <laughs> secret. It's just it's more hard work. The first week we came in and we went one and two. Um, and at that point, we kind of just sat down and we were, we need to change some things. So we did. We we went out that, that next week and we learned uh, just all the champions, every single one of them, what ones worked together, which ones didn't work together, how to counter certain comps, um, how, to, how to draft correctly. That's huge, by the way. How to draft correctly. If you can get, I mean, exactly what you want and force the team into picking something that they don't want to pick, you're miles ahead of them. And that's, I mean, that's what we've been doing. Um, I'd say draft, drafting is a huge part of it. We, we have like <laughs> spreadsheets on, upon spreadsheets of just information that we use. And we just got a lot more serious about it after the first week. And we've been doing really well since. So when you say you have spreadsheets of information, that means that <laughs> you guys aren't just playing the game. You guys are actively sitting down together, talking about the game, keeping stats and tracking. So do you guys like track your win loss ratios with certain heroes and stuff like that? Like how how detailed are these spreadsheets? Um, well, I mean, we don't really need to track our win loss with certain heroes. Uh, it's more, I don't know, it's just the like spread, picks and bans and stuff. Ba basically, just picks and bans. See what we're good with. What we, what our enemy teams, what our what people we're facing is, is good with. For example, like uh, Keylax on. On Snowflake, he's really good on Falstad, so we try to take that away from him every chance we get. Take him off of his comfort pick, you know, because I mean, when you give it to him, he's gonna play it 100 percent of the time. So we'll take that away from him. Um, just little things like that, and we have something for each team that we play. So uh, we we do have like a huge spreadsheet of every single champion, 
what they excel at, what they don't excel at, and who counters them, um, or what type of play counters them. I mean, we have just tons of things like that that we that we actively update. That is for our eyes only. We have it like on a private document. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Um, so so in heroes and generally speaking, for from the community perspective, a lot of people are still kind of back and forth in the idea that like teams are approaching the like the high competitive level and obviously what you just said is is something that pretty much needs to be done if you want to play at the the highest level so what like you mentioned that uh after you went one and two that you guys sat down we're like okay we need to change things so like how did you come into the game at the beginning and then like obviously that that midpoint happened you, you transitioned but like if you were to give advice for teams coming up like what would it be for like a, a very short thing like is it just grind, 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 or is there something specific that they should focus on? Um, a big thing that we did was, yes, grind, grind, grind. And a lot of the time it was n while not drafting. We, we figured out, well, we didn't figure it out, but I mean, like, when you're drafting, you can, you can play, like, three games in the times it takes you to draft one game and play it all the way through. So if you just sit there and just slam out games with different compositions that you want to learn... And that you want to get comfortable with, you learn the game a lot quicker. And so we started doing that. I mean, we still scrim people, but not as often. Um, only if we, only if we feel we need to learn something about them, I guess. Which is kind of, <laughs> you know, well, we're gonna hustle them kind of thing, but not really. <laughs> uh, but at the same time, you're hiding your secrets by not scrimming as often because people don't necessarily know your play style as much. Right. Uh, so it yeah. Goes both exactly. Ways. Yeah. Yeah, that's so, cool. I mean, that's. That's legit. Um, so, I mean, you have that. That's that's one way that you can improve. Um, and we talked about, or rather, you talked about learning all the heroes. What what was the process of that? Obviously, it was clearly a ton of grinding. But like, were there specific things? Like you said, you're the warrior main. Like, did you just sit down and say, "All right, I'm going to learn every single warrior, and I'm going to know the ins and outs"? And like, how did you go about doing that? Was it just literally a grind, or did you have a a method to go about it? Um. <laughs> It's pretty much literally a grind. Um, <laughs> you solo queue with it. Like for me, I solo queue with like every single warrior. Um, and I mean, I play other things just, you know, so I know what they do, obviously. But yep. um, for warriors, mainly, uh, yeah, I've just played everything. Like Chen, I've been playing a ton of Chen lately just to, you know, feel him out and see what he excels at and what he doesn't. And also, uh, like comp wise, we'll come up with a comp and then we'll have a, a goal with that comp. We won't just be like, oh, these five champions work well together, we're going to do this. We'll have a, a goal with that comp, like like early pressure or uh, excels at team fighting, good at you know counter-engaging uh, a heavy engaged comp, you know yeah. things like that. And then we'll just play the crap out of that comp until, until we got it down, until we're, we, we feel it's where we want it to be and we know how to play it the way we want to play it. Um, tell me more about Chen. He's actually the new hero. You said he's you, you've actually been testing him a lot, and I feel like you know, especially after HPL yesterday, it felt like not everybody's really sure how how to work with this hero. Um, so give me your thoughts on Chen. Right now, everybody's building him flying kick damage, which is all right, I guess. But um, I don't know. He's he doesn't have a lot of displacement he has his barrel roll and that's about it and then he has you can get a, a Q on his route so I mean he's tanky he's really really tanky but I don't know we're still feeling him out he's more of like a secondary tank that you can have I don't, it's not even that either like I, I don't know we don't know <laughs> I guess it's really tough to it's really tough to say because I haven't played him to his full extent yet but it's it's just it's tough to analyze him when he's only been out for like a week or so and we're Very still true. trying to figure things out yeah all right fair, fair enough fair. yeah so out of out of the warriors which one is your favorite like what if you had to have a, a go-to that doesn't necessarily have to be in competitive either just like which one do you like the most uh Tyrael for sure he's Tyrael. got everything he's got right. after a certain point he's got, after level 13 he's got everything he's got a stun he's got a displacement he's got a slow he can speed people up he's got a shield I mean, That's true. his whole kit, his whole kit's amazing. I like it. He's really good at displacing people. Yeah, I mean, his heroic mm -hmm. is amazing. That's for sure. And uh, yeah, and cast aside at thirteen is amazing. Yeah, it's, it interrupts everything. It's yes, pretty awesome. Everything. <laughs> yeah, for sure. 
low cooldown, cast aside. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so this patch has brought on a, a couple new changes. Uh, obviously, the the biggest gripe was the auto uh, ability queue, yeah. which got hot fixed real fast. <laughs> um, so I don't I don't know if you're uh, a sufferer of one of those or what the deal was there. But if that affected your play, I'd like to know about that. I mean, warriors aren't really known for being like super high intense mechanics, but some of them have it. So, yeah. any comments on that? It didn't really affect anything on my end, anyways. Um, a lot of people, major person it affected was Zeratul. Mm. Uh, but I mean, we didn't we didn't really see it that way because we use them more as a utility than damage. So I mean, yeah. the Devil Spike wasn't a huge thing for us. I mean, it's great to have that extra damage, but we use them more for the securing kills and yeah, and the heroic. So cool. Yeah, that makes sense. I'm trying. Go ahead. I'm trying to think of. I was just trying to think of other champions that might have been affected. I mean, warriors in general. Um, it kind of affected Diablo. Maybe if you smash someone against the wall and then tried to grab them right away, but I never ran into that issue with it. So. Hmm. Uh, nothing. I mean, nothing that really affected yeah, me. Yeah, hook gorge. There's a few things that definitely would have been right. Um, uh, just, yeah. just it was just definitely an annoying thing, but yeah, I'm glad they they hot fixed that pretty quickly. Um, it does seem a lot better now. Yeah. Um, but some of the other changes that we had were there were actually some big map changes now. Um, Haunted Mines being one of the more notable ones. Um, so what do you think about the new mines that we have now in the beta or alpha? I think it's even more snowbally than it was before. <laughs> yeah. If you watched our game against Glorious uh, on Monday, it was just. Well, we did. We just beat them to the mines, and we had like 50 skulls before they even came down and contested it because we could do it that quick. We had them in like 10, 15 seconds, and I don't know. It, both teams have to just pile into the mines and and deal with it. There's no there's no counter to going into the mines anymore like there right. was before. Like you could get all the merc camps, and the mines are big enough where they couldn't clear it, you know, effectively, with mercs bearing down on their forts. So you could come down there and help. And the major gripe people had was the giant's bottom weren't, you know, symmetrical. So if you had, you could have two giant camps pushing top while bottom, you could only have one on that one fort. Um, I think if they just made the, the camp symmetrical on the map, it would have been, I don't know, just smaller changes, I guess. Once changes in the mind is yeah. tiny. Yeah. You think changes the change the sp- at the top and the bottom is too much? Right, yeah. Yeah. And the making the mines that small, uh, you can clear it in like, 20 seconds if you're if you're uncontested with everybody in the mines so no real damage can be done up top at all there's no consequence yeah so i mean i know it's been a really really short time since it's come out but do you see this coming like the the changes of haunted mines do you see this coming to be a good thing eventually or is it just it just feels so off right now that it, it kind of feels imbalanced or um it feels like i think they just took it too far. They could leave the mines the way they are and then just change the the merc camps around, I'd say. Just put the the two the the two ogre camps back, but put them in better positions so that maybe it's symmetrical on the map or I mean I mean that's just my opinion. It's not hmm. anything. Yeah. yeah. I just think that that would be better. It'd be it'd be a way to I don't know, not force a fight mines at level like four when the mines open, you know? Like it's super yeah. early too. They started that the timers like at two thirty or something, the mines come up now or something stupid like that. Yeah. That's ridiculous. Now yeah. have, have you noticed a change in game length on mines? Does it seem like your games tend to be shorter than before? Oh yeah, for sure. They usually air on the side of ten minutes or less now. <sighs> like twelve to ten minutes or less, I'd say. It's they're super short. It's either, yeah. it's always one sided too, like one sided our side or one sided the other side, just depending on who wins the team fights super early. Yeah, it's very true. I mean, like you said, everybody's forced to go in the mines. Team fights happen. Whoever wins the mines then probably is going to get a few mercenary camps, and uh, the momentum is so far in their favor. Um, well, you know, outside of of haunted mines, I think probably the other big change is just the the garden terror. <clears throat> Um, or the plant terror, whatever they call them nowadays, and uh, you know they gave it the they gave it the the changes where it now has a new ability. It has the sprint, and they changed the way the polymorph works. How do you feel about the map as a whole now? I actually like it a lot better now. Um, you can't hoard your seeds anymore, and then use them till super late game mm-hmm. and become a god and just rush their core. 
<laughs> um, <laughs> which was fun, but the games are like 40 minutes long and it was just a headache. Um, now, if you get 100 coins, your terror spawns and you have like, what, 30 seconds to pick it up or it's gone? Um, yeah. Or you lose those seeds, so that's nice. Um, the speed is nice as well, so you can you can get to where you want to go real fast instead of wasting half your terror's time getting to a fort, mm -hmm. which was really annoying in the past. Um, overall, I think the changes on that map were were spot on. I like them a lot. Yeah. Um, they they changed the mercs back to disappearing at night, right? Or when when you summon the um, no, I'll, I'll rephrase that. The marks still go away when you're when you summon the plant now, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. They still go away, so, just like Dragon Knight. Yeah. So like, I'm still I'm always back and forth on that because that like, it's it's not like it was with the night phase though because right. before yeah, when it night became phase nighttime so they just went away period but now they, it's more like the Dragon Knight where they just go away once the the Garden Terror is out. Um, right. Yeah. So it's not. Like, is that like a good mechanic? Do you think? Is that does that like do you abuse that in competitive play? At all? Uh, abuse the fact that they can't get merc camps? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, it's not really abuse. I mean, if they no, just but... won a team fight, and, but, but it was on their side of the map, and they need to get mercs instead of push down a fort, you can grab a terror with, like, if, say, you have resurgence, or only one of you, or three or four of you died, you grab the terror and deny them getting any merc camps while your team comes back up. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's obviously not the ideal way to use it, but, I mean, it, it's, it's a way to stop them from pressuring you. It's also hyper situation though, because like you said, once you have those hundred seeds, you then have a very limited time frame as, yes. as to which you can actually grab it. So you don't have that pocket terror available anymore. Mm -hmm. So to make right. a strategic play where it's like, all right, we want to deny knights and stuff. I don't think we're going to see that too often, but it's a cool no. idea. That's for sure. It could, uh, it could definitely happen in a match. But, yeah. Uh, and ideally you'd want to get exactly a hundred seeds and then go force a fight as fast as you can while the, the, the terror is you know, blowing up or whatever it does. It looks like a balloon over there now and it just flops over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty so, funny. Yeah. yeah. So ideally force a fight or take a fort while it's growing and then either win that fight or if you lose a fight you have the terror to fall back on. Cool. Um I have one more question, at least for Garden. How do you think the changes affect public play? Not not competition, but like just solo queuing, like does it has the have you played it on solo queue and has it felt better now than it was before or is it still meh? Um, I haven't really played it much on solo queue, but I would imagine it would. Before in solo queue, it was like nobody wanted to take the plant terror. Like they're all scared of <laughs> getting made yeah. fun of if they played it wrong or something. <laughs> yeah. So and now it just forces someone just just go get it. You know, like it encourages team play and you know mechan mechanic usage on the map. So yeah. I mean, I think it's better. It'd be better for pubs and those games last. Uh, I mean, they they definitely made the map so it lasts less time. Yes, right. Those yeah, they used to be super forever. long. It's yeah. it's um, <clears throat> personal experience. It's it's a much more doable pub game now. Uh, pub, mm -hmm. you know, just solo queue. It's I I don't dread when I see Garden of Terror anymore, which is great, because before yeah. I would just be like, oh my god, you know. Um, <laughs> but but now it's actually it's it, they've done a good job at making it a much more. Uh, fun map to play in solo queue, because like you said, uh, previously in the former build, no, I don't, I don't know if people just were afraid of getting made fun of for grabbing the terror, or if they're just like clueless that it's actually available or what. But uh, nobody would get it, and now people, you see everybody like, all right, I'm gonna go hearth and get it, and they fight <laughs> over it now. So yeah, um, you know, that's good. It is good. Yeah. Um... So I guess we're done with those, right? Yeah, I think that kind of we... covers like the big, the, the, the most recent things. Unless there's something else in the patch. Like, are there any any heroes that got patched and and changed in this most recent patch? I think it's Alpha Patch 6.0 that you really want to comment on. Do you think anybody got destroyed that you're upset about, like, or buffed too much? Mm. I don't like that they nerfed Tyrael because that's my favorite champion. <laughs> uh, they nerfed his his level one his level one lane presence. I mean, he still does well, but he doesn't do as well. I mean, you could push Tassadars out of lane if you wanted to, which is crazy. Yeah. I love that, but <laughs> <laughs> they, so they ruined that for me. But other than that, I mean, I think supports got hit pretty hard. Um, all yeah. the all the the popular supports Brightwing got hit pretty mouth. hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brightwing mouth. They took a rewind off Uther. That's true. That's very true. So that's kind of a a big nerf. I think that was needed. It was needed. <laughs> we all agree. We all agree. 
is so easy to heal when he had rewind. <laughs> and du- the double couldn't stun. Couldn't die. I mean, it just, yeah, yeah, double stun. Yeah. It was ridiculous. Use everything while dead. Like, <laughs> it was so bad. Yeah. Uther definitely number one support. Yeah. I think he's still, I think at least in Europe, he's still considered like pretty much number one. Um, yeah, he's. Brightwing's up there, obviously, because Brightwing... Rhaegar, just, Rhaegar's so, up there now, too, though, and everyone yeah. said Rhaegar was Rhaegar the worst strong. support. And <laughs> it's like, they haven't changed him, they just changed the other supports, and it's just like, no, Rhaegar's amazing. Uh, I find that hilarious, but because I'm a, I'm a, big, I'm a, a yeah. big Rhaegar supporter here. Did they fix the level 20 Rhaegar heal bug on Dragon Knight? Yeah, they, I think so, they yes. updated it to say that um, it doesn't heal... I think it says like it doesn't heal to full anymore. It heals like a certain percent or something and then they also change the way that the area heal works as well yeah. so it's like <laughs> yeah it, it used to be just ridiculous like oh level 20 dragonite's almost dead and no no <laughs> it just, goes just right kidding it's up. full health <laughs> yeah it's like oh Crap. god yeah that yeah. sucks yeah, yeah well, that was fun good that thing <laughs> that's yeah good thing that's been fixed well i mean i think that pretty much covers the changes that we have from the most recent alpha patch and uh, I know Matt actually wanted to, to ask you a few questions about some specific matches. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> you guys are involved with the North American versus Fear Invitational, right? The the wonderful, wonderful time that, that is. And, um, and I'm going to say something that's going to be kind of weird to hear, I guess we'll call it. Um, but uh, a while ago, like not even two months ago, we like I heard your team and for for a slight backstory I, I work with versus fear and all them we do all of our stuff um and we were we were sitting there debating like who are going to be the four teams that we're going to bring into the north american one and like we had our three set and we just didn't know the last one and then like it came down to you guys and clairvoyant and we were like okay which one not sure and then you guys opted to play for a best of five set was it mm-hmm. is that what you played yeah and like that that was awesome like the fact that we like just props to you guys for doing that because like the fact that we're it's it's a for fun tournament and you're you're okay with playing like a satellite uh, match just to get into it is awesome and I, I just want to say thank you to that but like now you're in your first match is against uh, Snowflake are you doing any prep for that or are you just kind of like going into it in, like normal like you're playing with ECS stuff like anything special there um we'll definitely prep for it we do. We do prep work for every yeah. match. Just, I mean, it doesn't matter what your team is. We'll, we'll figure out what you play and we'll, we'll do prep work on it and everybody. Oh. So, definitely. That's really good. Can't, to can't um, give you special tactics though. So, <laughs> yeah, <basically, laughs> yeah. On, on that note, um, do you think that having like an ECS, you guys have only three other teams to worry about. You guys are in a four-team group, and with something like the the M- MYI Invitational is right. That's yeah, M- yeah, yeah. MVI, MVI, MVI. Um, you know, you really know what you have to prep for. Do you think just having that that small kind of talent pool that you really just have to research and prep for is really helping your success a lot? And do you think that other teams aren't maybe prepping as well as you guys are? I have no idea what the other teams are doing. Um, <laughs> honestly, uh, they they probably are, but it's. I mean, it's definitely helping with success because I mean before. When we scrim against, uh, I mean, even those teams, we would just go in and be like, we'd pick a champion because it was good, you know. We wouldn't pick it because that's what we were going for. Mm-hmm. Um, and like the last like four or five matches in ECS, we let every single team have Arthas, Kerrigan, Tassadar, or Arthas and Tychus because we didn't care. We we knew what we were playing and we were confident that we were going to do well with it. Um, and I don't want to say we force them into picking it, but we would, we'd come up with several scenarios, and basically, if they picked a certain way, we kind of knew what they were going to pick next and how we could counter pick it. Um, cool. So, but we definitely do prep work on every match, no matter no matter what it is or who the team is, um, and we'll do re prep work every week. Like if we play Glorious one week and we play them the next week, we'll do prep work both weeks because I mean things change in that small amount of time. Yeah. For sure. So um, I know we're coming up to the end, I guess. But um, I know that you said you played early beta for League. I don't know how much you've kept up with it, or rather, you also played season one. But um, now the, the game has obviously exploded to like ridiculous heights, and now they have like coaches, analysts, like music videos. Multi- 
Yeah, they have like multi. Yeah, well, just talking about the competitive side of things, not the production. But they have they have like coaches, analysts, like they have multiple people on the team that don't even like actually play the game in terms of competition. Like, do you think that Heroes is going to get to that point at some point? Because so many people like to look at this game and just say it's so dumbed down, like it's so um, it's so easy to get into, easy to play. But do, with all this prep work you're doing, like clearly there's something else there. So do you think that at at some point in the future that we're going to get to some kind of like hyper competitive level where analysts and coaches are going to come in and be a real thing? Definitely. I think it'll get to that. Um, I don't know how long it's going to take. I mean, it took league like a year and a half, two years yeah. to get to that point. Um, yeah. I mean, I think it'll get to that point. I just don't know when it's more how much the community backs the, comp- the competitive scene. Um, Cause I mean, there's people who aren't sure about it right now, and that's exactly how it was in League. Like, I mean, that's probably why it took it a year and a half to pick up, because people were just like, oh, you know, whatever, these guys are over here, think they're awesome or something. Yeah. You know, it's, it, it just, it depends on the community, and it depends on how quick things get put out by Blizzard, and also uh, just tournaments in general, like when, if, when, if and when custom games ever come back. Uh, they will eventually. Well, Steve. we know that <laughs> we know they're in the UI now. They actually, yeah. she actually shows it in the new UI. Custom games yeah. are listed in there, so and there's a draft up. option. Yeah, I think yeah, that's actually very exciting. Um, you know what? I'm just gonna make that a question. Which you prefer to see first, custom games or draft? If you had to pick one, uh, custom games. I would say I I, I want draft because everybody wants to see their everyone wants to see their ELO how good they well, how true. well they that's fare true, against yeah. everybody else. But I mean, custom games will. Uh, propel the community forward more because you'll be able to play whoever you want now without worrying about, you know, getting sniped in queue or not getting the person you're intending to go to. I mean, it's it'll just, it'll help all around. Tournaments, um, yep. Whole yeah, deal. no wait times, yeah, tournaments, leagues, everything. Makes things just more fluid. So you're not just like hanging on to a prayer hoping you get the team that you're playing against. Oh man, yeah, that's True. that's no fun. That's no fun. <laughs> it's it's not fun. Yeah. All right, I think I think we're set. Yeah, I mean, I think that pretty much covers what we wanted to ask you in terms of at least you know the game and uh, your favorite heroes, and we covered esports for sure. Is there anything else you want to touch up on? I mean, give us some background on like how your team became a team. I think that's kind of like the one thing we really didn't ask. Um, pretty much pickles and Wargreymon put a post on Reddit. Like, uh, we're looking for, we're starting a team, looking for some people. And when I joined, uh, it was Pickles, Wargreymon, Bims, and I think Vital, who's on another team now. Um, so we started playing, then Vital went to another team, and we picked Icon up. And just, I mean, it was just a Reddit post, that was it. That's it, like, wow. Hey, I mean, we're, hey. we're, looking to be, we're looking to be competitive. And we just, you know, we all meshed well together, no one... No one had any personality clashes, and we just kept playing together and had fun. So we decided just keep playing, see see where we get. <laughs> well, you know what? I see a lot of Reddit threads. I see a lot of forum posts just in general asking to start teams like this. And you guys are currently you know, easily front runners in the competitive scene here. I mean, you're, you're in ECS, you guys are number one in your division, and it all started with a Reddit post. <laughs> so if you guys, if you're out there and you're watching this VOD and you're like, wow, you know, just go make that Reddit post. Go find some kids, start up a team, and just do. Because if you're in the off at this point, you have that early advantage. You have that edge on the competition. And as much as that stinks for people that don't have access to the game, I feel like we're all going to be an, a level playing field because I feel like the beta is going to come out with new maps and it's just going to flip the meta to a pretty, oh, yeah. pretty. Everything's going to keep changing. Yeah, <laughs> MOMPAs yeah. always change. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Well, Poom, any final thoughts? Um. Nothing really. Just thanks for having me on. Uh, you guys are awesome. I love this show. It's pretty awesome. Can't believe I'm on here. It's like a dream come true. Wow. Yeah, you made it. You're in the limelight. I made it. I made it, guys. <laughs> well, boom. Uh, it's been a pleasure having you. Um, any any shoutouts? Where can people find you? You have a Twitter account? Whole deal? Um, yeah, I got a Twitter account. It's ESV Poom. Um, you can also find anything related to our team uh, at ESV Wildfire. And also check out our sister team, ESB Tempest. They're also pretty cool. And you can find anything about them on there. 
Um, shout out to my team. Shout out to Diamond. He's helped us a lot. Um, and that's, that's about it. <laughs> All right, Matt. You know the deal. Yeah. Shout out to Jeff who couldn't make it tonight. Oh, he no. died. <laughs> Rip. Because he died. <laughs> Iacona. That's a Iacona for anybody that doesn't know. Um, I, I don't really have any shout outs. I mean, shout out to everyone that's been helping me in doing a lot of stuff that I can't talk about yet. There's a lot of things going on in the background for esports. I can talk about uh, MVI, the MYI slash versus fear invitational. That's coming up, so we're going to have odds of that hopefully soon. Um, and those should be some really good games because there's, there's four really good teams in it. Yep. So that's coming, and uh, yeah, there's there's a lot of stuff coming up. Um, I'm doing my pin giveaway right now on Reddit if you're into pin stuff and ETC, and that's cool. I didn't see I'm a poster be, today. Uh, it's there. It's up right now. Okay. Um, there's I'm going to be posting a pretty massive article in the next couple of days talking about a lot of things, like a lot of ideas for the game. So be on the lookout for that, like maps, heroes, talents, all kinds of stuff. And uh, that's it. So Reddit, uh, r slash heroes of the storm. Come find me. I'm on there all the time, at Steve. I might start streaming some Diablo because I love that game now, and it's awesome. <laughs> 2.1 made the game awesome. Uh, but otherwise, I'll be on heroes. So come check me out. Thanks. Well, if you guys are watching the VOD live, I'm going to say point your, your browsers to, to the HPL broadcast. Uh, I'm actually not sure what the link is. Slash it's Nexus, Nexus Champ. Champ, yeah. Twitch.tv slash Nexus Champ. And if you're watching the VOD on YouTube, you can Just find... Hosted. You can find... The, I could do that on, on Twitch, but I, might, I think I'm streaming, so... Um, I think I'm. If you guys are watching the VOD, you can find the VODs for that at youtube.com slash nexuschamptv. All the VODs for the Heroes Premier League will be there. And that's gonna be, that's actually just started about 10 minutes ago, which is why we're, we're really rushing to get this interview out. We kind of a little bit shorter than normal, but uh, we did intend to have two guests today, so it was, we were able to, to reduce it. But Poom, it's been a pleasure having you. And uh, for anyone that wants to check out this and check out the VODs, if you guys missed the start of this interview, uh, all my social is just SolidJakeGG. It's Twitch, YouTube, and Twitter, SolidJakeGG, all around. You can find all my shows on the YouTube there. So thanks again for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time.